Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 40. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 4, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to see how to create a checkbook register like this one here. And the main thing we're going to do is we want to see how to calculate a column with a formula that will automatically calculate the balance. And here's the goal. We want to be able to type something here. This would be check 2109. Um, how about the same date as uh, that one? And then, then we'll say this to Google, too. And oh, look at that. Wait a second. Just a second ago, if I control Z, Z, notice nothing's there. But as I type some stuff in this column, I want it to automatically calculate the balance, just like a real computer system. All right? And so we wrote a check for 100 bucks. And then this better turn out to be 3,677. We want to see how to create uh, a template like this in Excel. Again, a checkbook register. You have a bunch of transactions. You're making some checks or withdrawals. And you have some incoming amounts, whether deposits or others. And we need to always keep a running balance. So I'm going to come over to this sheet right here. Now the first thing we're going to do is I want to show you how to create those borders. Let's look over here. Now notice uh, the in the horizontal borders are just regular black lines, but the column has these double lines. And sometimes for uh, templates like this, that's nice to visually uh, differentiate between the columns. So we're going to come over here and see how to do that. I'm going to highlight all the way down to there. And we in, in the home ribbon, you could come up and there's, there's the font and alignment and number groups, but there's no border group. Now, you could click this and then go to the border tab, but I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for the Format Cells dialog box, Control-1. And here's how it works. Let's try Outline. That'll put something only around the outside. And then the inside, notice there's Horizontal and Vertical. That means it'll put the same default line everywhere. You can see your preview. Let me do that again. None. Outside, just around the outside. The preview shows you just one horizontal and one vertical, but those represent all of the horizontals and all the verticals. Click OK. And that's not what we want, but at least we see how that works. Control-1. Now we want to add those special double lines for the verticals. Now notice in this preview, there's a left vertical, a right vertical. That's the outsides. And then that line represents all the inside lines. So all you have to do to have inside double lines is select your line, come over here, and click on the vertical. And there you go. That means that all of the, hor the vertical lines inside the table will get double, 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 double. But the outside ones will not. And click OK. All right, so that's pretty easy to do, but it's a nice touch on a template. Now, checkbook register. The way they're set up is you have one column. And checkbook registers, there's lots of different ways to set them up. Here's a column with check number. And the E for the, our textbook represents electronic uh, transaction, like a bill pay, a date. The check is issued to, or the uh, description of the transaction. Withdrawal column means those are the numbers that are being subtracted from our balance. And then they have a date. I still think the date should always uh, be in one column and not have a separate date for amount of deposit, but lots of checkbook registers do. And this column is for the additions to our account. If you were going to do this by hand, you would do this, right? Equals the balance minus whatever withdrawal. Enter. Equals the balance minus the withdrawal. Notice every time, what are we doing? Equals the one above. That means the balance. And then these are all withdrawals, right? Equals the balance minus the withdrawal. Every single one of those formulas are the same. But what, what happens when we get down to, oh, this is an addition. We no longer can use that minus. We have to do the one above plus. Right? And then equals the one above minus, because this is a deduction equals 1 above minus. 
Now, this probably should get be annoying to you, and you're probably suspecting there's a better way to do this. But it is helpful to do it like this one time, because it's important to see that we, in essence, have two different formulas. Let's think about this. Um, right here, I'm taking the one above, and I'm subtracting. But what's in this cell? Nothing, right? OK. okay. How about here? All right, one above minus. That's the check. Oh, and there's nothing there. Just noticing a pattern here. All right, so this one, F2. Oh, one above plus that. But do you notice that there's nothing right there? So here's a better formula. Because these we're going to have to enter in manually right? as we fill out our checkbook, and that's not our goal here. Watch this. We can say equals the balance. And in this case, we'll do the minus. But is it OK if we add 0? You betcha. And the thing, the beautiful thing about this is that right here, that green one is right there. So minus that number. But what happens when you get the formula down to this row? That green one will move down to there. And there's nothing there. So that's the trick. On the subtractions, there's going to be nothing to add right there. And on the additions, that's going to be that cell right there. There's nothing to subtract there. So this formula will work all the way down. Let's just check it. Look at that. And you know, here's a great way to check if you're in charge of the spreadsheet. I want to see if every one of these is true, and I don't want to eye it because my eyes are getting confused here. So I'm going to say equal is that cell equal to that. That's a true false formula. When I control enter, it gives me either true or false. Absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to leave that off to the side just in case you want to you're downloading this. And uh, let's change the formula right here. So it's equals 1 above minus 1, 2, 3, 4 to my left plus 1 to my left. And that formula will work all the way down. Control Enter. And I'm going to grab it. Uh, the fill handle with my angry rabbit and drag it down. Absolutely awesome. So that really saves a lot of time. And actually, you could stop right there. You could actually pull this down here. And if this doesn't totally annoy you, that formula is beautiful right there. And on, in this class on a test, you know, if you put in that formula, it's fine. But I want to show you, because remember back over here, if uh, I don't put any data here, uh, it shows nothing, right? So that means if I print it out, it's uh, a good report to print out. But as soon as I type something here, watch, before I type something, it's nothing. But when I type something and hit Tab, it shows up. I want my template to do that. That's much nicer. And then I put my um, $100 check or E thing or whatever, and it makes the right calculation. So let's see how to do that. The whole trick was what? If we put something in this cell, it's going to calculate. If there's nothing there, then it's going to show nothing. All right? Let's check this out. As I come right here, I have something in this column, so it should calculate. All the way down, this column is always going to have something in it. So every one of these formulas, if there was a way to say, hey, formula, look over there. if something's in the cell, then go ahead and calculate the formula. Otherwise, if there's nothing in the cell, then put nothing in the cell. Now notice what do we do? It, we use the word if. So in regular language, I say the formula is going to say, but in regular language, we say the same thing. If something's in the cell, then show me the formula. Otherwise. If there's nothing in the cell, show me blank. So I want to come up here and show you how to do that. Now, if we have an if statement in everyday language like that, what do you think the name of the function is that will allow us to put one of two things in the cell depending on some if statement? It's the if function. Now, one more point before we look at the if function. What are the only two possibilities that we're going to have in this column? Meaning, for every one of these cells, what are the only two things that can go into the cell? It's either going to be a formula, or we'll learn, we'll learn how to tell a formula to put nothing in the cell. 
or put a blank in the cell. So something, something, formula, 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 but when it gets down here, I want all blanks. So this whole column can have one of two things, either the formula or a blank. All right, you ready? I'm going to come to the front of this formula. And actually, maybe I could uh, just for a moment to blow this up, I'm going to make these call. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to make these columns really small. And then I'm going to blow this way up. Maybe I'll even do it even smaller so we can't see anything, right? Just like that. All right, so now all I'm looking at, I already have that formula that's got the right math in it right there, right? But all I want to do is do our if function to either show the formula or blank. So I'm going to type the word if, and there it is on our drop down. I'm going to hit tab. Now, the way the if function works is you got to give it a logical test that comes out either true or false. So what is our logical test? Is there something in the cell? Or you could say it, is there nothing in the cell? I'm going to choose the logical test, is there nothing in the cell? So I'm going to click on that cell, and I'm going to say, is that equal to? And we got to uh, learn the syntax for not nothing, but blank. And you type a double quote, double quote. Now, this is a logical test. It says, is the cell equal to nothing? All right. So it either comes out true or false. So I'm going to type a comma. Now, what do we want in the cell if it's true? If it's equal to nothing, as it would be down here, it, the formula is going to look here. Is there nothing? What do we want in this cell if there's nothing there? Nothing. It's not really nothing. We want to put another double quote. All right, that's the value. Because if that cell right there, that many cells to my left is blank, then that means this cell should have a blank. This value of true is one of the things that gets put in the cell. All right, value of true. Now I type comma, and that's the value of false. It just means my logical test is, is it blank? Well, if I ask, is this blank? And the answer is false, because it has something. That's the formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now, here's the moment, and I'm going to make these uh, a little bit bigger now. Actually, I could just go. All right, so see that formula right there? I don't even have to delete any of these. I just have to go. And there you go. Now let's try it. This is exciting. I'm going to type 61409. Oops, I typed the wrong. 61409. I'm going to type Google. Now watch. That's autocomplete there. I don't see anything there, right? But as soon as I hit tab, it means something's there. And it will uh, show, show the calculation. Tab. Oh, that is magic. Now 100 bucks is what we paid. And look at that. Immediately, this updates. Right? We have a 0 there. The formula is showing because we had something there. But as soon as we put 100 bucks, it calculates. Now, I actually think this was um, 2109. And these should have been uh, E for E transactions. All right. Uh, so let's do this one more time uh, down here. Alt-W-G zooms into selection. I want to do this all together. All right, so we know our formula is going to be equals the balance from above minus any checks or uh, withdrawals plus any deposits or additions to our account. But we also want to always have our formula look in this column here. If it's blank, then I want to show a blank in this cell. If it turns out the question I'm asking is, is it blank? And that returns a false, I want to run our formula. So you ready? Equals if. What's the logical test? Oh, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cells to my left? Is that equal to blank? That's the logical test. It can only come out true or false. If it's true, the if function is saying, hey, give me the value of true. Oh, I want to show nothing. One of the things 
uh, one of the two things that can go into the cell is a nothing, a blank in essence. Comma, otherwise if the value, value is false, which means there is something there, what do we want? The cell above minus 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 4 to my left, plus 1 to my left. Close parentheses, Control Enter, drag it down. All right, and there's a few more you can practice here. In, uh, oh, I gave you a bunch there. And there's a bunch in the uh, textbook also. All right, so checkbook register, we saw how to do some borders. We saw how to do the uh, essential part of it, which is understanding that if there's a 0 here or a 0 there, that little part will work. And then we added an even cooler feature, how to turn on and off the formula depending on what's in our check issue to column. All right, see you next video.